to rack with a, with a string here and here around the legs. But students always rack too tight, and then they move and flex, and the string popped off. This one's already gone. All right. So you, you, you just have to position it all right, like that. You have to come in close to the wheel. You have to be able to come, come this close to the wheel. And I'm going to turn it on. Check to make sure it works. And we've got power. These are all the tools you're going to need. A wooden rib tool, another wooden rib tool, a loop tool, a metal tool, uh, another loop tool, this and the wire cutter and the sponge and water. But your best tool is going to be your hands. All right. So it's got a foot pedal, but I suggest you get it to a set speed and then take your foot off the pedal. But before we do that, we have to seat the clay, the, the clay. we have to seat it down, sit it down on the wheel head. You want to make sure your wheel head is dry. If it's wet, what do you think would happen if I slam the clay down there? Slide. It's going to slide and it's also going to make a big mess. You're going to get everybody in the room wet with clay. It's going to spray out everywhere. It's going to slide off the thing and it's going to have a big... You want it to be tacky. You don't want to be too dry. And you want to make sure it's slightly rounded. Some people have it totally flat and then they flatten it out and they end up with a pancake on there. <laughs> so you want to get as close as you can. I'm going to put this wheel thing out of the way. I like to put it. And I want to get right over, get comfortable. I want to get right over the clip. And I'm looking right here. And some powders will just set it down and press. I've seen them do that. They're just going to set it down and press. But I like to take it and slam it down. I like to slam it right down on the clay. And, just, and, and get it down nice and even. Okay? All right. So I'm going to get it started here a little bit. And you want it a little bit faster when you're centering, but not too fast. And this is like a foot pedal on a car. It's easy to go over, go over, over speed. I think that's about good. And I'm going to wet my hands, wet the clay, wet my hands. And you want to get, the most important thing is, you can see it's not centered right now. You want to get your hands over the clay and hold them steady. And hold them steady. Don't let them spin around. You just got to hold your hands. And you notice on the videos we watch on YouTube, they were doing like this. The Korean guy was doing like this. I don't recommend that. That's for potters that have been doing it for years and they've got strong hands. What happens if you squeeze too much this way, where you don't have your fingers, it's going to squirt it's going to squirt out and you're going to have an egg. So I suggest put your, one thing he did show you was he had his, his elbows or his arms resting right on his legs, which is good proper position. And he has his nose and his eyes right over the clay. He's not doing it from back here. He's got his elbows down. He's got his hands here. And he took a lot of time centering. And I'm not going to open. And this splash pan is kind of loose. Our wheel has a better splash pan. This is a cheaper, a little bit cheaper wheel. But hey, that's what we have. So I'm just going to hold my hands there. And I'm going to wrap them around. And I'm going to get right over the clay. And I'm going to come up a little bit. And if you start to open, I really don't like this splash head moving around. It's called a splash pan. Catch any, catch any water. And you want to have it kind of like a donut, and I just felt an air bubble pop, which means my wedging wasn't too good. And it's starting to get a little dry. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit. Sorry if I splashed you. Okay. So if you put your finger right at the bottom, you can check. If your finger's bouncing like this, it's not close to being centered. If it's, pretty, if it's pretty stable like that, and you go all the way up and it's pretty stable, you're pretty close to being centered. And there's rings, there's little lines scratched in here on the wheel, and you can see these little circles. Those are called centering rings. And you can use those, if I, if I got it exposed, I got a ring right there, and if I put my, my, my finger right there, I can see it's a little bit, it's a little bit off center, right? There, 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 <laughs> there. You can see a little bit. So I need to do some more centering. So again, I'm not I'm just going to put right over the clay. Going down. And you can put put your hand like this and just kind of press in as well. And I'm going to put the water down here. This wheel was probably ever used because aluminum and oil, you can see the kind of coloration on there. It might be the first time this one's getting used. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to take it down low. I'm going to take it down a little bit lower. And then I'm going to bring it back up a little time. I'm just squeezing. And I'm, I'm getting pretty, pretty centered now. And I want to make kind of a ring. It's kind of like a donut. The basic position for anything is kind of like a donut. And you can put your hand this way. You notice I have one hand on the outside and one hand on the inside. too much slip on there, it's not good, on your hands or on the wheel. And you'll notice right now, if I stop it, oh, it looks perfectly centered. You don't notice it, whether it's centered or not, when it's still. It looks, oh, that's perfectly centered. It's, it's not, but it's close enough to throw with. I can, I've been able to throw things that work perfectly centered and throw nice bowls and pots. It's not that critical a factor. Um, wedging is kind of critical to get out the air bubbles. Having the right moisture content is kind of a factor and the right speed of the wheel. Don't get it too fast. That would be way too, that's full speed, and that would be way, way too fast. It might even throw off a few that fast. So you want to keep it about, you want to keep it about like that speed right there. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do, now that I, I'm centered, I'm not totally happy with it, but there's that thing moving in me. I wonder if there's a way to screw this down. No, there isn't. Not half of it. That makes a little difference. Okay, I'm going to throw, I'm right handed, so I'm going to be on the right side of the wheel. This is set up for, it, it might be a reversible wheel. I don't know, it may not be. Our wheel is, I think, is reversible, forward, reverse. This one I don't think it is. So if you're left handed, you have to go with your hand on this side, and it would be digging. See, if I'm left handed and I have my hand on, it's going to be digging into the clay. This is set up for a right handed person. So I'm going to come down here. The first thing I want to do is I want to set my depth. I've opened the hole, and I want to set the depth. And that's about good. And if you want to check the depth, you're going to take your, your, your needle tool, your needle tool, and you're just going to stick it in the center and push down, put your finger there, and then pull up. And that's how, how deep my base is. You don't want it like this. I mean, if it's a, if thicker, is better than thinner. I've seen people push their open all the way down, and then they have a hole. So thicker is better than thin because you can always go back later and trim from the bottom, turning it upside down. I'll show you how to do that. That's trimming and remove the excess clay from the bottom. Um, bring it back up, and I'm going to show you the proper hand position for, this is kind of the magical part. This is actually the part called throwing. We're going to take this and we're going to pull an open vessel. Everything on the wheel is called an open vessel. And I'm going to gang up on this right side. I'm going to get my hands really close together. And I'm going to start right down here at the bottom. And I'm going to get right over the clay, and I'm going to just slowly pinch and hold my hands together, oh, and man. slowly go up. Yeah, but like, oh, Lord. <gasps> now, now we're getting there, but it's very, very thin, and my hands are really slippy, so wash off your hands. Here's my sponge, and i got to get more sponges for us. So we have more sponge to do. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to start at the bottom and never stop and then go back to the bottom. If you start at the bottom and you're pulling, go all the way up to the top. I kind of a thick edge. And you want it to be as thin, if it could be as thick as this tool, the sidewalls, that thick, that would be good. If it's as thick as your thumb, you're getting there, but it's, it's it, and then as, you're, as, you're, as you go down to your little finger and then down to the tool, then it's good. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to see how tall I can get this. I'm going to, again, I'm over the clay, but I'm on the right side and it's kind of, it'll, it seems kind of awkward and weird, but it's good to have your elbows in and your elbows down. And I'm going to come in on the bottom of that piece and I'm going to grab that clay and I'm holding really steady and I'm using all my fingers. That's why you see little scratches in there. some of the clay. The clay is actually a pretty good consistency for throwing on the wheel. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Now, if you wanted to, if you're having a hard time uh, defining the shape, you can use this tool. This tool is really good for when you're first starting out. If you want to define the bottom edge, you can use this tool. If you've got excess clay and you just want to take clay off the wheel head, it'll do that. If you want to come in with the bottom, and then back trim, just pushing in that little edge there. 
And you could take that little bit of excess clay. Came right, did you see the color there? There was like uh, a dark black on the clay. That's from, that's from oil on the, on the head. I thought this was used, but maybe this is the first time using it because that's the way they packed the wheel with, with oil on the wheel head. And when you mix it with the clay, you get that dark color. But it, after we use it a few times, it'll go away. Look, it's perfectly centered now. It's not bouncing at all at the bottom. See that? I'm right on the ring. Can you notice that? Perfectly centered. All right, if you, if you can get it from the side, and, and I've got like a little nipple on the thing, that, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm gonna, I can trim that later. I can go in with my sponge and just hold my sponge there in the center. And then that takes it away. Okay, I've, I've seen a lot of students, they like to put swirl designs, they put their, use their finger. Oh, also, when you're working on the wheel, take off all your rings, take off all your watches and bracelets, and make sure your nails are trimmed. Girls, if you've got long nails, don't even try. You can't, you've gotta have, you gotta have no fingernails. You have to have short fingernails. So if you've got long fingernails, you're gonna have to cut them and give up the beauty quality for the sake of being able to throw on the wheel. Another tool you can use you could use the loop tool to cut the bottom a little bit. And this one's a big one, and that's more for trimming. But this little one, if we want to come in with a bottom and, 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 and come just a little bit and take a little bit of clay, and you can go all the way up with that. If the bottom is too thick, you can remove a little clay that way. But I prefer you don't use the tools too much. I'd rather you try to use your fingers and, and your hands as your best tool. Learn how to use those as a tool. Okay, so the bottom of, if I look at the bottom edge, it's like that drawing up there on the pinch pot on the chart. We've got a lot of clay from here to here. So I need to push that over and have it more thin on the bottom, thicker on the bottom, and then this, this, this round section at the bottom, this corner is filled. I need to push that all the way in so that my sidewalk comes up from the base and it's even all the way up. So that's what I gotta do next. And I'm gonna try to get it thin. And if it collapses, it collapses. But I like the speed, I like the consistency. So now I'm again, that's why I wore brown khaki pants today because I knew I was gonna get covered in a brown shirt. So I'm gonna put my hand here and I'm gonna take my hand, my fingers here. And you always do it, I always do it at three o'clock because I'm right handed. My right hand is always on the outside. Usually, there are exceptions. And my left hand's on the inside. So again, I'm gonna take my fingers here and I'm just gonna hold steady and get right over the clay. And I'm gonna push this to here. And then I'm gonna come up again slowly. I just hit a bump of something there, hard piece in the clay. Okay, so what happens if somebody's screaming at you and yelling at you, oh, you bumped the clay. Is it ruined? No. no. What you do is you're gonna bring your hands back down to the bottom. It's starting to drop. Bring your hands back, make sure your hands are wet, come back in. And we gotta repair that little, that little bump piece. I'm just gonna slowly come up. Now, take it out. to be getting height. You're going to be trying to get as much height as you can, um, and even in thin walls. But once you get a little practice at it, if you want to take that shape and you say, well, I want, to, I want to bring it in. I want to bring it in a little bit more. It's going too wide. So I can take my hands, make sure you've got lots of clay to walk around. I can take my clay and bring it and I can say, all right, I'm just going to curl it in. I'm just going to curl my hands in, in. I'm wrapping it up and over. And what you do is now I do totally change the shape. Okay, uh, and you can get all kinds of different effects there. Maybe you want to take it like this, and you want to bring it up in here, and do the opposite. You want to bend it out. Ooh. Out is the easiest one to do, but you've got to be careful, because if you do it too much, it's going to curl all the way down and touch the side, and then it's stuck. I've seen students do that, it'll wrap all the way around. Um, probably in the beginning, the best thing to do, and you can change that if you, if you change it too many times, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be weakening the, weakening the clay. But the amount of clay that I have there, this should be good for a soup bowl or a flower pot or just an open vessel to put anything in. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get a little adventurous. I, I like the bottom, I'm the thin. I'm just gonna try to see if I can get it thin and tall. That's kind of the secret. And I should discuss a little bit 
this position. Um, this position is key, and what's also very important is that you don't make it too thin on the bottom because then all the weight on the top, and I kind of did what I just said not to do. So I'm going to come back into the sponge and the root tool. And I'm just going to come inside a little bit. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit together because I can feel I kind of stopped there and I pinched a little bit too much. So I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to try to bring it back in a little bit. That's what happens when you go back when you're demonstrating and you go out and in and out and in. You're weakening the clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my whole fingers down straight like like a sandwich, like two pieces of bread, and I'm just going to start here. I'm just trying to go up slowly. And that's about, I'm not going to do too much with it now because that's kind of like a nice form. That's actually a, a, what I'd call a keeper. I'm not going to keep this one, but I might. Um, one thing that we don't have, which we need to have, is bats. Not the nocturnal um, animal that comes out of the cave and is the enemy of the jungle. But they call it a bat, and what it is, we turn this off now. A bat, there's a, a bat pin right here. There's two pins that I have. The pins are like little little bolts that come up here, that screw in, that come up here, and you have a plastic like this, but it's a little thicker with two holes that correspond, and you put it on there, and then you throw on that, and when you're done, you just pop it off. You just pop it off to put another bat on. Usually, if it's tall and delicate, you want to leave it here before you cut it off. Um, but let's talk about cutting off. Somebody hand me that wire tool from over there. Before Wait you cut it off, one thing that you're going to do, say this is a keeper and I'm, and I'm going to keep this. I'm not, I'm not going to keep this. I mean, I could, but uh, uh, I can try to cut it off, but it might be hard. Before I cut it off the wheel, I'm going to turn slowly. Slowly. Oh, and I can see a little air bubble right there. So before you cut it off, you've got to make a little guide for the wire to follow. So I'm just going to take this tool and I'm going to dig it in right here and I'm just going to take it in. And it doesn't have to go very far and I can trim it later when it's leather hard. So if I have a little, a little ugliness at the bottom, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be trimming that later. And I'm just going to go stick that right in on an angle, just like that. That's all, just like that. What that does is that creates a little guide and come over here with the camera. Can you see that air bubble right there? See that air bubble right there? If you notice an air bubble, and that's from improper wedging, and also that's right about the area when I said, ooh, I can feel it getting thin because I folded it down, I folded it in, I folded it down. You do really don't want it. I can come in here with my needle. Come on back in here. I can come in with my needle tool. If you see an air bubble, just come in here and pop it. Ooh, that was a big one. And I popped that, I popped that air hole, and now I'm going to have to wet my hand and go back in again. And slowly go on. And I think I'll put a little bit of a curl on it like that. And my final thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the sponge and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna decorate the outer edge. Not decorate but clean up the outer edge like that. When you're done you're done. And I still have a little air hole there. I didn't squeeze enough so I have to go back in and do it again. Not too fast. Where's that? Oh, there it is. It's right about here. So it's about like that. It's kind of like a soup bowl. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wheel off. And usually, if we had the bats, if we were on a bat, we would just take the bat off. We would leave it on the wheel head. We would leave it right on the wheel head. I think I took out that bubble. 
And I think I cleaned the edge as best I could. I don't see the, I, I see a little hole there. I'm not gonna worry about that. The hole that open is okay. It's gonna fill with glaze. You can't go back later and add glaze, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna, where's the, where's the wire tool? Okay, when, you do, when you're cutting your thing off the wheel, and I'm not gonna say this. Everybody sit up and watch. You guys, can you watch? There's a little, there's a little bad spot on this, and it always gets right in the middle, right where you don't want it, but there's a little bad spot right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ignore that. I'm gonna wrap my finger there and I'm gonna hold it like that to avoid that bad spot. And you have to put your, on the outside, and you have to drag it, and it should follow that guideline that I made. And I'm just gonna drag it, and you can watch the inside. If you see the clay move on the inside, what does that mean? That means that you're really thin. If you see the, if you see the wire move the clay, like ripple underneath, that means you're really thin and you've got a problem. Okay, so now to get this one off, the, the wheel, um, it's going to create a lot of, uh, I'm going to bring this over here, I'm going to try to get it off. The way, it, it, it's going to be difficult to do, usually you would leave it for a while, but the way you're going to do it is you're going to get, again, get right over the clay and you're going to pop it up like that and pop it up and you got to get your hand up underneath it, which is really hard to do with something this big and delicate. And it's going to try to sit down a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty much gone at this point. All right. But look, I didn't drag, I didn't press hard enough. That's way too much clay on the wheel head. And that's one of the reasons why it's so delicate because I didn't press really hard down there. But this isn't something that I was going to say. But let's, let's take a, let's, let's do an autopsy. Let's do an autopsy. Let's take, I was going to say this anyway. If I was going to say that I would have left it there for maybe three or four hours, I would have come in and 20% of the moisture would have been gone from being in here and I would have been able to cut it and pop it right off. It would have been stiff, not leather hurt. But you can take the wire cutter and you can cut that and you can take a look and see the sidewalk. Okay, there's the sidewalk. Remember I said down there, just like with a pinch pot, the whole thing should be this thick. But look at that right there. It should be way over like that. There's way too much clay on that bottom, just like we had with the pinch pots we're getting. But I don't see any really, there's my air bubble. There's my air bubble that I popped with a needle tool that's gone. All right, so this clay is reusable. And that's pretty good. I don't see any air bubbles or anything. It's a little thick at the bottom section, but I'm gonna do a smaller one now, and we're gonna be able to do uh, a lot easier with that. You can use this tool. If you want to clean your wheel head, turn it on. Just go like this. That'll clean all the clay off the wheel head. Uh, again, just you don't want it to dry out, so recompact it so there's no air bubbles inside. Okay, put that back down here. Uh, all right, clean your wheel head. Remember, what does what's the what what should the wheel head be when you're going to put the clay down? It should be dry. So it has to be dry. So I've washed it, I've removed all the clay. If there is a lot of clay in the centering rings, uh, it's, it's actually enough to create a problem. Just very, and don't do this, I'll do it. If there's a lot of clay, you can just touch. Don't press too hard because it's aluminum and you don't want to scratch it. You just go like that and that will take any clay out. But that's pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now, can you, we're gonna get ready for students to demo. Um, I'll let the students try some. Turn off the, the film for one second and stop the camera, please.